This is a simplified version. It's the simplified genetic code conversion for manufacturing proteins. There are more than 100,000 proteins that are manufactured in every cell of your body. And those proteins are manufactured based on digital codes that are read from DNA and will ultimately transferred into the protein manufacturing factory that is also controlled digitally um, to manufacture the proteins. The letters along here, the A, C, G, and T, those are called bases, and there are only four of them, so it's real easy to remember, just like baseball has four bases. But uh, the idea is that there are two strands of DNA that are in a helix, and the reason for that is for stability. And we're not going to get into that, but, uh, but basically, they are always paired a is connected to T in the opposite strand, and C is always connected to G in the opposite strand. And what I told you before about information also applies to DNA, because every T is connected to an A, one of the strands is completely redundant. It is necessary, but it's redundant as far as information is concerned. So although the strand of the, the DNA in a cell in a human, for example, contains 12 gigabits of information. Only six gigabits are, are actually information. The other six are just re repeated data. Well, so there's, there's really 12 gigabits of data, but, but only six gigabits are actual information that is, is useful because the other six gigabits are just repeats of that. They're totally determined. The Genes along the DNA are particular sequences along the DNA sequence that are used to manufacture proteins. And what happens, uh, there are, like I said, 100,000 or more proteins that are generated from this. Many of those proteins are called enzymes. Enzymes take other reacting biochemical products together and put them together have an energy supply to make a reaction happen. If you didn't have an enzyme, then some of the reactions would be extremely slow. The longest known, if you didn't have an enzyme, would take a trillion years for the, for the reaction to take place. With an enzyme in life, the reaction takes less than a hundredth of a second, which makes it usable for life. So enzymes are a very important part of any living system, but enzymes are simply proteins that are manufactured in the same way that every other protein, and there are more than 100,000 different proteins in the body that are used. Okay? So if we look at a um, simplified version then of life's incredible complexity, there are about 25,000 genes in the DNA, each having more than a thousand bits of information, and many of the genes are overlapping. Now, I don't know if you ever tried to uh, create a message that depending on which letter of that message you start, you get other messages that are meaningful. Well, that's what life does. It has overlapping genes, so that you get the same patterns that are interpreted different ways. And also, the real complexity is that you have messages within messages, even, and other kinds of messages that are generated. So the complexity is, is a whole lot more than what we're, we're seeing uh, in the simplified version, but this is just a simplified version. The digital codes that you have, it's base four because there are four bases. Uh, the A, C, G, and T are four, four bases. And they're grouped in groups of three for specifying what is called a codon. So three of those bases create one codon. And since each base can be any one of four, you end up with four cubed or 64 different codons that can be specified uh, by a group of uh, three bases of the DNA. 
the proteins are generated from amino acids and there are 20 amino acids that are usable for life and we'll look at that process in just a little bit. Uh, so you have two, two things, one of them the 20 amino acids that are used for generating the prote proteins, the other one is the codons that specify which amino acid are going to be used. So that you have 64 different codons <coughs> that will be used to redundantly specify which amino acid, and there are only 20 amino acids, so you have more than one codon can generate the same amino acid. If you had one strand of DNA from every person who has ever lived, it would easily fit in a teaspoon. And, and each, each one would have the six gigabits of, uh, of information in it. Now if you could encode other material in the same manner, there would be enough left, room left over in that same teaspoon to hold the content of all the books that have ever been written. That's the information density of DNA. There are more than 2,000 different proteins that are enzymes, and they're absolutely critical for, for life. Um, the DNA and the proteins all must be fully formed and functional in order for you to have life. <clears throat> Bill Gates has said, human DNA is like a computer program, but far, far more advanced than any software we've ever been, ever created. Now we get into some interesting stuff. <clears throat> this is how proteins, which basically anything you can see in, in, in life, or whether it be um, structures or whatever, is manufactured with proteins, the, the rods and the cones and the eyes and so forth. The transcription and translation process is very interesting from a computer aspect. You'll have several proteins that are used to unwind a section of the DNA. Remember it was in that spiral, the helix. Then you have a rather large protein, about 3,000 amino acids long, that goes along the DNA chain and it creates a message, messaging system in what's called messenger RNA. Messenger RNA is a communication device. That's like taking a wire and trans and a USB port or whatever, um, internet, <laughs> transferring information from one place to another. And so this, this rather large RNA polymerase computer goes along the DNA strand within the nucleus and it creates a message that when the message is complete for the manufacturing specification for a particular protein, the messenger RNA migrates out of the nucleus into the cytoplasm and ultimately to a ribosome. A ribosome is a computer controlled factory that is used to manufacture proteins. There are thousands to millions of ribosomes in every cell. So there are lots and lots of these factories that are in the cell. And they will read the messenger RNA, the digital information along the messenger RNA, and use that, which will specify which which codon am I talking about here? In the meantime, there's a transfer RNA computer that has been programmed to pick up a particular amino acid that's floating in the cytoplasm. So you have this transfer RNA. By the way, the amino acid is on a totally different end of the transfer RNA than the codon is. But what happens is the programming in the transfer RNA is such that it will pick up a particular amino acid so that it matches the codon that's on the other end. That will migrate into the ribosome where the ribosome will combine the amino acids that are transferred into the ribosome 
to create a string of amino acids in a protein. And some of the proteins can be anywhere from 100 to several thousand amino acids long. So that's how uh, amino acids are used to form proteins. What I think is really very fascinating is that every protein is manufactured using the ribosome in the process as shown here. What's really interesting is that in order for a uh, protein to be manufactured this way, the process requires an existing more than 150 proteins already in existence and fully functional, which is kind of interesting. So anyway, that, that's how the, um, the process of building a protein from amino acids works. Ultimately, the, the code, the digital code along the DNA is used to specify the sequence of amino acids in the protein. It's digital transmission. By the way, there are air correction and things like that that are involved in this also. <clears throat> so the information systems of life then, somehow we have a genetic operating system that is ubiquitous. All known life forms have the same genetic code. They all have the same protein manufacturing facilities in the, in the ribosomes. They all use the same types of techniques. So something is existing, pre-existing, and the particular genome, the genome is the set of programs in the DNA for any particular organism. So the genome is not the DNA, and the DNA is not the program. The DNA is simply a storage device. The genome is the program that's stored in the storage device, and that is dependent on what organism you're talking about. Okay? The codes, the native language is uh, codon-based, and it uses encryption and decryption. The enzymes uh, are used to, uh, to read the, uh, the, the codes and transfer them. The codes are transferred to the ribosome, which then decodes the, the codons and communicates with the in order to build the output to the protein that is being manufactured. So in every cell then, there are multiple operating systems because each, the, the ribosome, the DNA, the, the enzymes, uh, the transfer RNA, all of them have their own operating system. They all have their own programming. Multiple programming languages, there's encoding and decoding, hardware and software, there's specialized communication systems, there's error detection and correction mechanisms, there's specialized input output channels for controlling the various things that happen and for a variety of specialized devices in order to accomplish the tasks of life. So these are very complex digital programming and communication systems.